big interview, UK EU edition. And like, man, did you guys F up that UK Brexit crap? Because now I have to do UK EU edition, which is a pain in my ass because I should just be doing the EU edition because you're all still in the EU. But you guys have British summertime too. And, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't smell of colonialism or anything. So, all right. So, um, but I love the UK and um, we are here for that and here for everybody around the world. But this is the evening time in that part of the world. And that's why we're beaming this out there right now. So here we go. Let's pay a bill. So if you want to support me, go to my profile, pay me five, 10, 15 dollars a month. You know, if you want to do $500 a month, I'll give you my bank account number and, or you can send cash and we don't have to worry about taxes. And then uh, you can give awards in the upper, see on your screen, somewhere on there, there'll be an award button and you might've gotten some free coins if you just joined, but you can give us some awards to let us know that you are enjoying the program. And then we have Mm, where's my logo? Ooh, where's my producer? Why isn't it here? But anyway, Scooch Case is our sponsor. And they are out of Noblesville, Indiana. Good company, good guy. I mean, is it fair to call the owner a liberal? Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I think he would be cool with it, but I don't want to say that he is. But, uh, you know, it's a good company. I would guess the product is actually made in China, but it it is an American company. Oh, made in Japan and China. Actually, that's interesting. So Scooch Case is a absolutely fantastic little case. It's got this neat wingman feature on the back so you can hold the phone and, you know, put it in landscape portrait mode on your desk and your table. Scooch Case, buy them because then we can, you know, do this show better. So let's get this thing moving, being that we are 42 minutes technically late, but um, it's okay. So without further ado, we have like, holy cow, hmm, some very, very talented people that are going to be joining us. And I got to say, just like in terms of like <sighs> star power and actual like performance presence, this is the biggest group of performers I've had on, I think at once, at least at this caliber, I don't think like the local Girl Scout troop, you know, that we were doing a year ago in our neighborhood would count. But um, here we go. Let's talk to these amazing people. And um, we will do a quick popcorn, like just a couple of sentences, no more than Oh, you guys are all professionals. I need it to be, I need you to come in at 36 seconds with each of your quick bios. Don't go over, don't go under, right at 36. And then um, we are going to talk about why we're here. So let's go with you, Rose. Who are you? Why are you the, here? <laughs> I have to unmic. That's difficult. Yes, there you anyway. go. Unmute. You guys can generally, yeah, there you go. We can figure it out. Hi, I'm Rose Rosen. I am a casting director based in Florida, casting everywhere in the world. I do films, episodic, reality TV, and commercials. And I am happy to be here. Thanks. Well, I'm thrilled to have you here. Let's go, Ellie. Hi, I'm Ellie Rods. I'm a voice actor and singer based in Florida, and I'm super excited to be here. This is awesome. Fantastic. And I know a little bit about how you got here, and we'll definitely let other people know that. And, you know, um, I'm glad you're excited. Hopefully, though, you'll be like on um, some, you know, I don't know. What is a big interview over there? Oh, I do know. But, um, Let's not talk about that guy. He's kind of a jerk, right? Um, Piers, something or other. Uh, so, um, yeah, hopefully you'll be on. I don't know. Is There's no Carson anymore. Who is it? Is Jay Leno's gone? It's I don't know. They got somebody at night. Hopefully you'll be on there soon. And what about you, Frizo? Hey, I'm uh, Frizo Gosliga. I'm from the Netherlands, actually. Uh, also a voiceover artist and uh, also very excited to be here. Looking forward to it. Fantastic. Awesome. The Netherlands. That That is, um, is that a first? 
Hmm. Wait a minute. Maybe. Hope so. Sweden. Yeah, Sweden for sure. I've got Swedish friends and, and no Swedish peoples in the entertainer entertainers. So we've uh, talked on here before. Um, but in the Netherlands, that's a definite first. Let's pop down to Rick. Hey, um, uh, Rick Party, voiceover talent, also uh, a radio host for over 30 years in Chicago is my hometown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, we're right here together. Yeah. Excellent. Are you still in Chicago? Or are you doing no. the um, you the remote thing? Yeah, I, I'm actually in Florida now, but Chicago's home. I did radio for three oh, decades you live, in Chicago. What, you live yeah. with uh, what uh, Landmeyer and a um, bunch of those other Chicago disc jockeys that all went down to Florida and uh, <laughs> yeah, pretended exactly. they still lived in Chicago. I mean, I don't have a problem with it because I want to get to L.A. as soon as I can. Get the hell out of <laughs> Chicago. It's freaking too hot and too cold. Right. <laughs> Great to meet you. Likewise. Chris. Thanks. Hello, I am Chris. I'm from Wigan in England, in the northwest of England, and I'm a voice actor and an impressionist. And I am very happy to be here with all these fine people. Oh, thank you, um, Foamy Homie. Hello from Los Angeles. Foamy Homie. Okay, he needs to be, he is animated and he needs a voice. Oh, you should check him out and follow him. Um, no. He talks. Um, sorry, Foamy, you know, but these guys are pros. Anyway, great to meet you, Chris. Actually, great to meet you, Rose, Ellie, Friezo, and Rick, if I didn't say it. And now, Allie. Uh, now, nah, let's just skip. No, I'm just kidding. Allie, tell us about you. I'm just in a weird <laughs> mood today. It's probably the weed. Illinois, you know, you can right. do this legally, right? In England, I know this amount of weed would put you in prison for about a thousand years in the Tower of London. But um, and I've got like ten of these sitting around the house. So Jesus, I'd go to jail forever. All right. So go ahead, Allie. <laughs> Hi, this is Allie Dovey. Hey, um, I am a New York native, born and raised from New York City, Bronx, Brooklyn, uh, the Bronx. Oh, all right. Yes. Go Bronx. Yes, Bronx Bombers, baby. Um, and I am a singer and voiceover artist. And just like everybody else, super excited to be here. This is really fun so far. Awesome. Fantastic. And you know what? You guys are always uh, welcome to come back. And if anybody wants to do, um, I don't know, another program like this, but you don't need me to host or anything. You know, we talked to Deborah about some things. All of you, you got an idea. You want to do something? Let me know. I will um, either myself or my producer will be happy to do a few shows with you to get you up and running. If you need any help from um, HAPS, you're having any technical problems or whatever, I will let them know that you need a little bit of kid glove, you know, care and, and they will take care of you as well. It is a, I love clubhouse clubhouse has totally changed my life as it has so many people, but uh, this little platform in its, in its own way uh, is been equally transformative and it is um it's a whole it's a whole different way to, to do all this stuff. So I want you to be here because I want the platform to succeed. You want to do something on on here, anything you need, I'll get it done. We'll make sure it happens. Deborah, you're kind of why we're here. So how are you? And tell us a little bit about you and and uh, unmute yourself if you haven't yet. Hi guys. Yes, my name's Deborah Wotton. I'm a film and TV producer um, based out of Pinewood Studios in the UK. Um, <clears throat> I specialize in animation and I live in Greece and work remotely. So it's great to have such a large family here on um, our clubhouse. Not only do we have 2,000 members in the 5 to 9 club that we started at Pinewood back in 2009, we are nearly at 5,000 members on clubhouse and we will be three months old on Sunday. So we were really pleased the community we built on the clubhouse. Yeah, it's fantastic that I really like the idea that the club went from a, a physical place into the ethereal here. Wow. All right. So Pablo, and we're going to do this once in a while. So uh, probably what we should do is what I sometimes do, try to just catch a beat between each person's conversation. Give me space to be able to pop up into the chat. You know what I mean? It's a rhythm 
be fun to get that rhythm going with eight people, but you know, it, it can definitely happen. That's Pablo De La Hoya. What's up, buddy? In LA, Peter Bittner in LA, Pablo and Peter both work for Haps. And uh, thanks uh, for stopping by and saying hi. And like, I don't think we have room, uh, but if one of you guys wants to come out and say hi, I'll drop out too. But I know you're working and busy. So thanks for coming by, guys. And yes, so Deborah, what is this all about? You know, this contest or something. Well, um, I work, do one of my close friends on Clubhouse um, is Mark Summers. And me being in animation and him being a casting director, we were constantly asked the question, you know, how do I get a voiceover agent? So um, we sat, we thought, okay, well, why don't we find an agent and create a competition? So a couple of months ago, we started a contest and we had hundreds of people come over the four weeks that... Um, allowed them to come up for 45 seconds and do something to in audio. Wow. That's and fast. Then, like, seriously, you got 45 yeah. seconds the first time to be like, hello, my name is Revolution McKinnison. Well, I can't do any sounds or noises, so I'm done. But hi. <laughs> exactly. And then the four with the top votes from the audience went through to the semifinals. Oh, wow. And cool. then after four weeks of auditions, we had 16 semifinalists who were all given between one and a half and two minutes to do their piece. And then after after the semifinals, um, we picked six of the, well, we didn't, the audience picked six to go through to the finals. And then each of them was given a minute to do a commercial read a minute to do an audio book and a minute of characters. And they were marked by the agent uh, for each of the sections. And also at each time the audience voted, everything was correlated. And the winner was Ellie. Hey, all right. Look at that. Um, Ellie is the winner. And so um, let's... See, I need it. Anybody out there want to technically direct for me? Hey, I can always, you know, you can jump up. Let's see. Okay. Wow. I am failing miserably. Uh, hang on a second. Let's do this. Let's put Ellie on the screen. Put her in charge. There she is. All right. And then how do I just get myself on there? I think I do this. I drop to the bottom and that can happen. All right, so Ellie, oh, no, come on, seriously? Man, that was a lot of buttons to push, people. All right. Let me try this. having fun with it. That's a good part. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I seriously, I'm actually asking out there, if anybody wants to come up here and technically direct for me, um, wait, somebody's got the power. Oh, it's just slow. Wow, okay. That's not me. That's just the, um, really? Okay. It worked or somebody's magically doing it from Haps. It was you, Pablo. Thank you, buddy. I love you. Okay. Ellie, like, holy crap. Like you won. Like, like what did you do right after you won? Like, you know, did you scream or what'd you do? <laughs> I was in shock. Um, my father was crying actually. <laughs> so I was like, Oh my gosh. And then I, I was just kind of like in shock for about like, I guess, uh, three days. It didn't like sink in. I was just kind of like, huh, I really just won like the first VO contest like ever. Okay. And then I was like, <laughs> okay. And then after all, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, it like it sunk in like a little bit after, but it was such an awesome experience. I'm so grateful to Deborah to Hermione, to every single one of the panelists, um, to my one of my VO coaches, Rick Party, who's on here right now. He's awesome. And Bobby as well. And um, oh, Michelle and Madeline French, Jay Simon, the man with the voice. So many great people. Also, um, Rose, too. Like, just, and Emma, especially Emma Harvey, too. I'm super grateful to them. So, yeah, it was just uh, a really cool experience. 
and also all the finalists too that I love so much and they're all pretty much like really good friends of mine too um so yeah they were all amazing too but it was crazy loved it <laughs> and I am frozen and I just tried to yes, unfreeze you are. <laughs> I am. hold on let me see if I'm frozen on my uh actually here on the computer I am okay something's using my resources today which is a little weird I think uh I think the U.S. government is um, finally catching on to me. And Oh, I also forgot to mention also Mark Summers and Francine, too. There's just a lot. I, I have to name every single person because I love them all, and they're just so great. <laughs> and I'm so well, that's sorry fantastic. That all right. <laughs> well, this is interesting. My camera, which is my one of my phones, decided to, to die. So, um, that's okay. wow, hang on. Great time to play radio. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. So we don't need to see me without my. Um, There's a question here back. asking for a sample, Ellie. Maybe you could do that in the moment Ooh, I that love we it. are waiting. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I got you on the sample read. Um, so one of the voices that I actually did while I was, um, <laughs> during my first audition was a voice that, um, my lovely appointed big brother, Chris Woodsworth helped me with, <laughs> which was actually Marge Simpson. So, um, on one of my auditions, I was actually kind of like, um, I was kind of doing like a Brooklyn presenter, like speaking to Marge Simpson um, and other characters. So one of the things that I did was just, I was just kind of like, um, you know, hey, everyone, I'm excited to introduce our next contestants who will be auditioning with Robert De Niro, a.k.a. his character Travis Bickle's infamous line. Are you talking to me? All right. Who do we got up? And then, you know, first of all, I did like a little kid. And so I'm just kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm ready, I think. Are you talking to me, mister? And then, you know, uh, the conductor was just kind of like, all right, uh, that was cute. Okay, next up we got Marge Simpson. And then Marge Simpson was just kind of like, uh, excuse me, I was looking for Homer. And then she was just, so that was kind of an example of what I did out of some of the voices. <laughs> yeah. Ellie, I love you. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Ellie, we all how love long Ellie. ago? When did you, <laughs> like, too. when did you first do a voice and after your parents relaxed and said, oh, she's not possessed? Um, when did, uh, do you remember how old you were when you started like doing other voices? And I mean, you don't hear them in your head though, right? No, no. I, I'm good. Okay, good. Understand. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, when I started doing voices per se was at a very young age, I would say. Um, so when I was little, I was just kind of like a very, um, enthusiastic kid that was very always like just kind of like acting like I would dress up as like you know like as like different characters even when I was little and then my parents would just be like okay whatever <laughs> so they would just let me be um so one of the one of the first um well actual impressions that I ever learned was Miss Swan from Mad TV um, because I just loved that skit so much. My parents even made me go to like a drive through and actually speak as her and order our food. I remember it was like a KFC and, you know, like I just pull up to this drive through and then I'm just kind of like, oh, hello, how are you today? Uh, my name is Mrs. Swan and I'd like to order a biscuit and a large fry. And then they were just kind of like, okay. So when I like, pull up to the drive through window, they're just kind of looking around like, Where's this lady that was just speaking? <laughs> so it was just, um, yeah, it was very interesting. And then wow. I taught myself how to yodel too because I watched The Sound of Music. And I just like love that. Like, I just love the sound. I, I don't know why I tried to learn to yodel, but I did. So I was just kind of like, um, you know, um, I'll give you just a little example. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So. There we go. 
<laughs> wow. So awesome. I, don't know, I don't know where I would use that, but I have that oh, under my belt. Yeah, <laughs> I mean I mean you can you will. It'll come. <laughs> um the uh Hmm. Well, let's do this. So Rick yeah. from Chicago, um, mm -hmm. how you doing, man? Um, right now here in Chicago, it is like, I don't know. It's like 60 degrees lakefront's open. It is absolutely freaking gorgeous beginning of the summer in Chicago. Uh, so you know how big of a sacrifice this has been for me to be with all of you here today. Um, oh, sure. but, and I just so appreciate everybody that's here. This is so fun. So Rick, um, how are, how are you? Who have you, like, were you have different people been mentoring people and stuff along the way to in this stuff? Well, well, not, not during the contest, the, um, uh -huh. actually the contestants amongst one another, they were mentoring each other. We're not allowed to do, you know, during the contest mentor gotcha. well, or coach them through the contest. So it was only after uh, I was able to uh, take on Ellie as a student after the contest ended. Ah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Um, wait, you're the mentor after the contest. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, and you're like, oh, dude, you're a prize. Like, you know, he's like, a prize. You know, exactly. like you're like a yeah. snack. You know, like you know, you're important. I've been called gotcha. that a few times. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, you know that is. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Allie over here. Did she like, just say that like out loud? Like WTF? I'm, wow. I'm just, that was funny. <laughs> I, you, you are a snack. So um, <laughs> the hell you people give it away. Right. <laughs> I'm so All right. <laughs> okay. Deborah so say we actually kind of mentor Deborah. Would you say when, when they're actually on the stage, we give them, you know, great oh, sure. words of wisdom while they're there on the stage. Exactly. You know, as each of the contestants would come up, the panelists would give them constructive feedback. And we actually have contestants that would come back week on week. And one of those actually made it through, through pure tenacity through to the semifinals. So words of wisdom were, you know, as I say, gems were dropped by the panelists and the voiceover community really worked hard together and helped each other, which has been, I think the biggest takeaway from all this is the community that they built together since the contest. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's fantastic because I have, I know we all have experienced it, you know, through clubhouse, all of these communities that have, have come together, but even, you know, I was on a, I had a bunch of people on my show the other day and it was funny because they're all working professionals in film. And I'd been the only one that had been to film school. So, you know, wow. Okay. I didn't, really do as well as I was hoping, but, um, the, uh, the group of filmmakers that are working in Hollywood when I'm in school, there's, they, you know, they're a niche, right? Think of all those people in Hollywood, like Lucas Spielberg, and there were about four or five others, you know, that were just incredibly close and, you know, are really pretty much drove Hollywood for a long time. So those groups that you form in these connections, um, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of power and, um, in those groups in terms of helping each other and helping each other get work and, you know, let each other know of opportunities, putting them in your films and all of that. So that this community has come together. I'm excited to see kind of where that goes. Deborah was the, what was the, or anybody actually could speak to this, but probably you best Deborah. the, the impetus here initially for this contest was was to do what? what you know what what did you want to accomplish with the contest oh you're muted sorry that's a clubhouse thing we we carry on talking while we're muted hey ellie <clears throat> so yeah basically we had a seed of an idea that we wanted to help people with cyber industry so we thought if we can get some people that are voiced over talent and know what they're doing and you know that's why we reached out to rick and el michelle and the man with the voice and oh we were we were just so lucky to have you know people like rose join us as well you know and 
the whole idea was to get industry professionals to help guide people that wanted to do that as a job. And if we, you know, and we organized for uh, Emma Harvey to then find new talent because I think it's because we were constantly asked, how do you? And it is such a niche area mm -hmm. for getting an agent. It's so much more difficult. So it's one of those, we can do it. So why don't we? That is awesome. That is, that is very, very awesome. Ellie, how long um, have you been chasing the, like the, you want to do this as a career dream? Like how long ago did you start? Actually, um, when I was little, I wanted to be a singer, but, um, and then I kind of went into the hospitality industry. And then during the pandemic, um, I kind of had like this, this kind of moment where I spoke to myself and I was like, what am I doing with my life? Am I, am I doing what I actually like to do and all that stuff? And then I kind of decided, you know what, I'm going to start doing stuff that I actually want to do. Um, I've always had voice acting as an idea of something that I wanted to follow. My mother has always constantly told me to become a voice actor just because um, I would on the daily just be doing different impressions or different voices. And she um, wanted you out of the house, basically. Yeah, you were driving she, her crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> but um, yeah, she basically was urging me to become a voice actor. Um, and also because it also incorporates sometimes singing and acting, which I adore acting. I used to do musical theater. So all of that is kind of like in a nicely made package when you're a voice actor. You kind of do a little bit of everything. So that's where I decided to seek a coach. That was the first thing I did. Um, my coach, uh, her name is Tracy Fow. She's amazing. She was my mentor throughout um, even the competition and everything. Um, and I have another mentor that I adore. Her name is Happy Joy. And um, she's basically, I call her my business mama. And I called her mama. She's the mother of all voiceovers on Clubhouse. <laughs> um, and she's amazing. Um, so they've really kind of helped me throughout um, my journey as well. Mm -hmm. Even my own parents too. Like they've been extremely um, helpful and very supportive. So I decided this year. And um, Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. That's pretty much... Rocket in. Yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty cool. So, um, let's see, Frizo, how long did it take from the moment that you decided you wanted to be a professional to being a professional? How long was that journey for you? Oh dear, um, my journey was actually pretty uh, fast because when I was in wow, my 20s, another one. Yeah, when I was in my twenties, I wanted to do voiceover work, but I. I for some, I tried, but it didn't work. And later I discovered why, because you really need acting skills to do this. It's not enough to have a nice voice or to be able to read pretty well. I mean, you sure. have to really act. And uh, I hadn't done that yet. So um, I, I backed away from voice acting for a while. Oh, my camera decides that it's time to cool down, but I'm not letting it. <laughs> Um, so I backed away from voice acting for a while, did a study, became a psychologist, you know, did the normal working things. Um, but I also, uh, went and did improv with a, an improv group and that was really fun. And that teaches you acting and quick thinking and, and just basically being someone else for a while on stage and spontaneously, um, and I, I did that for like seven years of which five of those, I was probably on stage almost every week. Um, so that was a very good background for acting and, and, and voice acting, but still, um, I didn't decide to do it until November, 2020, which is less than six months ago. Oh, well, a bit more than six months ago now. And, oh, uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Holy cow. Okay. This is always interesting. Can I, can the direction I just it goes. Jump, go ahead, Deborah. Can I just jump in? Um, Friso, can you tell the story of what happened with the uh, journalist yeah. in the audience? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was amazing because, uh, well, Clubhouse came along in February. Um, so I got on Clubhouse and then I saw this competition and I heard the panel. I, I think the first or second rounds had already run and I was like, oh, am I, do I dare to do this? And then uh, I went ahead and did it, put up my hand for the third, uh, for the third preliminary rounds. And there was a journalist in the audience and he heard that and he decided to follow me around and he heard the semifinals and then 
he found out that I was going to go through to the finals and he put that in the local newspaper and that got picked up by the by the national newspaper and that got picked up by national radio here in the Netherlands like a Dutch guy oh, is wow. entering, uh, an English voice over competition why would why would he do that and why so um yeah the, they they were dying to find out what what was I doing in an English voice I mean you're in the the Netherlands like you got a lot of free time it's freaking cold up there you know, <laughs> Not of course you're doing though. something like that. You're probably going to learn Finnish next, like if you're crazy. But I mean, yeah. Well, why are they questioning you on that? That's awesome. So keep going. Sorry. Uh, they just thought it was it was amusing for for to be in a final with four Americans and 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 one one person from the UK and then just be in an English voiceover competition. So that was great. And then the national radio decided to make me give away. Well, I wasn't a snack like Rick Party, but they gave away a, <laughs> they gave away a gift, a treat. Um, I don't know, um, a, a single serving. You're yeah, you're like a single serving kind of guy, well, not a total six, snack. Six, you know? so probably a meal for a week. Then. But um, <laughs> no, but but they they gave me um, they had a little competition where they gave away a voicemail message to someone who had a really awful voicemail message, and they would get me to sort of do a new one for them. So that was really oh fun. nice. I miss yeah, those so, days of the answering machine. You know, yeah, yeah. But that that so it's it's been an incredible ride for me. It's really fun. Um, and yeah, it's, it's ha it had lots of good publicity, uh, getting to know people, of course, all the finalists, all the panelists and the people from the five to nine club. It's been really great. They do, uh, like table reads for scripts as well. And I've been invited to two of those and then, yeah, that's all amazing. A lot of stuff came from that. That is, that is a great, a great story there. And what, um, Chris, give us the same little scenario for you. Cause I'm kind of really interested on how everybody got here because we know Ellie, you know, just being launched into it, um, is, uh, it's gotta be very interesting, but yeah. Tell us how you got here. Okay, great. Uh, basically, uh, first and foremost, I'm a, an animator here in the UK. Um, and I kind of saw myself to be this guy who just randomly did silly voices just along the way. I always had um, a fascination with how the heck impressionists actually do it, how the voice actually works. And so um, I found that uh, uh, for the uh, video games that I was working on, uh, I, I wasn't able to uh, take part in the voice acting, you know, for that. Um, but uh, I started putting uh, voices towards like, social media, I eventually joined uh, TikTok. I did these fun little things, you know, that were just getting uh, so much um, like uh, fascination and, um, you know, uh, praise from people. So I felt like I was doing something right and I was starting to push it and experiment. And there were voice acting challenges that started to appear. Like, uh, you want to be a voice actor? This is the commercial voice acting challenge. So I would try that and um, I would uh, home in some of my acting experience as well. And when I discovered Clubhouse, I found it bit by bit. Um, I was actually starting to do um, my impressions when I would uh, introduce myself uh, in different rooms that I went into. And uh, yeah, it, it seemed to be having a really positive effect. So I carried on pushing it. Um, uh, my my girlfriend actually, <laughs> hi Rick. <laughs> my girlfriend actually um, said to me that she, uh, she thinks that well, she told me straight up, I think you should keep doing videos where it's um, it, it's like a split screen, you know, like uh, maybe a scene from a movie and uh, on the other side of the screen, you're doing the voices. So I started doing those, getting this uh, creative outlet out. So one minute I'm doing, uh, I don't know, uh, Gollum uh, in a scene from Lord of the Rings, or I'm doing something from Disney's Big Hero 6. I'm doing Stitch from Lilo and Stitch or... Um, Eddie Murphy, you know, uh, like in the uh, Nutty Professor, you know, or something like that. And um, and then there was one night um, the on Clubhouse, Deborah reached out to me. I'd been in one or two rooms with her before, and she said, um, I'm actually hosting this uh, voiceover contest. <laughs> and... Um, and I think uh, you you really should join. It's happening tomorrow. I've heard mm -hmm. you do impressions. And um, yeah, so I thought it would be fun and I didn't expect it to be as big as it was. There were so many like 
yeah, amazing judges and, you know, big people in the industry. And there were so many, like, audience members. And um, I did my 45 seconds, like, after settling down my nerves, waiting for it. I did about four different character voices, like impressions, and um, used my normal voice for a little bit of commercial reading. I finished. And by the end, when they called my name to the This is Peter Attenborough. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, we did lost I just him. Hear... Yeah, we did. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. I heard him. Crap. <laughs> the, um... I, I hear from him to go into one of his voices or something. Yeah. That's what made yeah, it confusing. Like, <laughs> I, I heard, like, I heard, I heard Sir David Peter Attenborough. Attenborough or something. Am I, yeah, da, am I hearing things? Or is are you here? Sir Peter, are you here somewhere? I don't see you. I'm. Sh are you wow. around, are there, Chris? Are there any other famous people here with us? I don't know. Um, We're all famous, right? You know, yeah, right. and some of the and some of them, like me, are infamous. Sorry, That's right? <laughs> I, Deborah is infamous. Absolutely. Hey, Pablo, if you are still listening, it is not letting me upload an image and this image of the love. You know. Which I like, uh, but I don't really on this want it on the screen. I can't make it go away because it's not showing up anywhere. So, um, you know, uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody could. Oh, could somebody speak for the llama? Anybody? Hello, this is the llama. Hello, I'm the llama. Llama's <laughs> a chain smoker, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I completely I mean, reject ooh. that llama voice. Man, which llama like was that, oh. man? Llama, llama, llama. No, no. Anyway, um, someone said they like the llama. I'm the llama. Me think the llama looks a little bit like me, like Jaja. <laughs> thank you, Lucia. Jar -jar. Reset the program layout, and thank you, Pablo, for doing that. Um, By the way, just to say, I didn't leave on purpose. I don't know what happened there. Technology. <laughs> that was your diva moment, Chris. That was your diva Chris, moment. Chris, Chris, I don't believe you. Okay. <laughs> Exit you stage left. left. to Complete spite liar. us. You know, I mean, like, what a good Please move, say. too, because I was pissed when you left. Like, you know, <laughs> God, the best guy on here just fucking left. What the hell? You know, so, all right. But we're glad you're back, my friend. Allie, oh, okay. not Ellie, Allie. Um, no, let's skip. Oh, no, I don't want to, want to do that twice. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's mean. Um, tell I us a little bit about your journey <laughs> to uh, uh, being an actress and a voiceover artist and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I, I have wanted to be a voice actor. I can specifically remember the day I wanted to. I was in third grade, and we were doing the what Wait. do you want to be when you grow up? Oh, third grade. What do you remember the month? I don't remember the month, okay, but I do right. remember you said specifically. I mean, third grade. Yeah, it's pretty specific. But it I was, thought you were going to go with like day Dominican and Independence time. Independence Day. I remember okay. it was being <laughs> Dominican Independence Day. <laughs> Dominican Republic like Independence wow, Day. Wow. Okay. So whatever day Ooh, that is, I it. forget. Um, <laughs> anyway, we were doing a project where we had to write where you, what you wanted to be when you grow up. And at first I drew myself as a pop star, but then I remember putting in parentheses, oh yeah, and I want to do voices for cartoons. <laughs> Oh, cool. um, so that has been something I've wanted to do for a very long time. But when I was younger, I was a little sick and I was getting a lot of ear infections to the point where I was starting to go deaf in both of my ears. So mm. that was a dream that was fading for me because it didn't seem like it could ever be possible. But I had surgery. I healed. I did all my therapeutic things that I needed to do. Um, and I slowly started getting back into it, but I went more similar to Ellie, the music route. I started doing singing again, and I was really insecure about it at first because I couldn't tell if I was hearing things right and whatnot. So it, it took me a while to like grow back into my hearing. Um, mm -hmm. But once I did, and when I once I started to get more confident in it, I took the music route and ran. I did music in high school. I did music in college. Um, and I kind of put voiceover a little bit to the side with the exception of doing radio in college. I loved doing radio in college. Um, there was a project that I had a friend ask me to do and they wanted me to do a voice of a little kid. And I was like, okay, that's a little weird, but all right, I'll do it. And I went and I did it and I realized it was my senior year. I realized, wow, I love this. I 
I always wanted to do this. Um, shortly after that, I graduated. I moved to Orlando because I worked at Disney for a short time because I did the Disney College program. But when I came back up to New York, I was kind of in a weird post-grad, de- I don't want to say depression, but a slump. Um, trying to figure out, okay, well, all my life has been school. What do I do? Where do I go? Um, and then I finally took it in me to just Google voiceover coaches and classes around New York City. And I found a few. I was trying to figure out if they were reputable or not because I couldn't tell at first. I was just kind of going in a little blind. Um, but I did find a really awesome voiceover coach, Roger Becker, in the city. And I got to do voiceover classes with him for a little bit. But not too long after that, the pandemic hit and everything kind of shut down. Life kind of got on pause. And I had some time had passed and I heard about Clubhouse. And I really, really, really wanted to not lose the momentum of voiceover too too deeply. And I heard that on Clubhouse, you can meet other people in the industry and learn more about whatever you wanted to do. For me, it was voiceover. Um so I went, joined Clubhouse. I found Rick Party's room. I was super intimidated at first snack. because it was... For those of you that didn't <laughs> know, his snack. name was also Rick. <laughs> I found the Rick Party room. That's his the voice new nickname room. forever <laughs> on Haps. The snack. Sorry, Allie. Keep Love going. Love that. <laughs> um, and I was super intimidated at first. So I just kind of listened in like the first week, second week, just to kind of know what I was doing and know what I was getting into. I went for it. I tried it out and I got on Rick Party show. If you do a particularly good job out of a script read, you get the Rick Party ear horns and I got the Ooh. ear horns on my first go and I was shook. From Damn. It. So That's serious. Like, hmm, maybe, maybe I'm not, maybe I should be a little bit more confident in myself. Awesome. Um, I made friends with Ellie and Chris just before the competition. Ellie and I have a club together on clubhouse. We became so close. Um, and instant best friendship, instant <laughs> best friendship. And I found the club, the 529 Mark Summers presents competition just on a whim. I was actually online to get my vaccine when I was listening in to like hear what it was about. Um, and I really liked what was going on. It was like kind of like Britain's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, that kind of vibe on clubhouse and i was like okay i think i want to join this competition i went audition for the first time i didn't make it in the first time but the second time around i did make it to the semifinals and then to the finals so um voiceover i've been taking much more seriously 2021 so i'm still fairly green into it as well um but it's kind of been an on and off thing without me necessarily realizing it i guess in my life Excellent. Wow. Just lots of, um, you know, just the journeys where we, to get us places, um, is, is just always a wonderful thing to explore. Rose. So normally the route to voiceover work is what, like as a casting director, like do people just like look up your address and just make like funny sounds and characters and stuff outside your door or, you know, how did people do that before? I mean, I go to voiceover talent agents to hire voiceover talent and it's such a weird uh, niche in the industry that honestly half the jobs that have voiceovers in them, my clients say, Oh, I, I got that. I'm taking care of it. Like they have, like a particular name talent that they want, you know, okay. I mean, they name talent make a lot of money in voiceovers and, and people hire name talent because they want to hang out with them and they have a budget. <laughs> and so it's like, let me you hire Morgan Freeman. I, I'm actually, just right. You the there you go. Is. That's what I was curious about. So yeah. named talent, you know, um, you're talking, stars more or less i mean yeah, obviously there picture. are um voiceover artists or voice actors you know um very well-known ones certainly in, in the industry and i'm trying to think like off the top of my head i definitely know some of the voice actors from the various um cartoons and stuff over the years but i can't 
pick a name there out are, of my I mean, head. All actors, and many of them end up being voice actors, and some of them right. Americans go global. It's 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 a huge industry. But then well, it's also a weird industry. How long, have you, in industry. How long have you been in the business? Thousand years. Thousand years. <laughs> so you remember when um, Hollywood actors would never do film actors. We don't do television. <laughs> Right, but you they do it people. in Japan. But exactly. That's exactly what I was going to say. Right. And then we all discovered that, you know, these 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 folks that believed in, you know, film were betraying us by making, you know, commercials in Japan for lots and lots of money. So, um, you know, things really did. Um, they really have changed. Um, but at the end of the day, that the world has changed. if you're Morgan, it's not just for, the voice industry. Mm hmm. But right. if you're Morgan Freeman and you've got that distinctive voice, you know, you've got a better shot at a job because you're Morgan Freeman. So, um, it's given be... the budget, mm -hmm. given there you go. The budget, okay. So they will who can do Morgan, Morgan Freeman. Freeman. Anybody? I mean, can anybody do Morgan but Freeman? That's, nobody can. That's, I mean, you can try, but still the audience is going to know the difference. There you go. It's so and, well known. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 And that, and that's its own thing. But, who has that budget? Most your most most productions don't have that kind of budget. What you end up with is a lot, a lot of people going to a place like Voices.com or whatever mm. to hire voices very cheaply, and mm -hmm. that's a whole other thing that I don't I don't even touch. Yeah, but, Fiverr I think has voiceover actors, or there's several. What is that, that do. for five bucks? Is that what we're talking about? Well, I nothing on Fiverr that. is five bucks, I think, okay. anymore. But um, yeah, because I I hire people, you know, obviously for various things on the various stuff, and I do run over uh, voice actors, and yeah, you can get um something for way you know cheaper on there. Obviously, quality um you know, not withstanding on some of that stuff. It's but, a um, crazy yeah, industry it, 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 is my it, biggest point. Yeah, yeah. The, the thing is, is, you know, talking about voiceover talent from somewhere like Fiverr is like talking about the difference of a meal yeah, of right. a golden blur to a hot dog right. from the corner of the street, you know? Yeah, it, it, right, right. It, but, you know, we went format. through this. This is like the third, maybe the second time because – you know, 30 years ago when I was a professional photographer and everybody was like, well, we all have digital cameras now or whatever. We don't right. need photographers or graphic designers, which my wife was at the time. My first wife, she was graphic designer. We don't need to hire a graphic designer. We have, you know, a computer and we can do it ourselves. And it took them about 15 years, I think, to realize 10 to 15 years to realize, oh, you actually need to know how to make an image look compelling you actually need to know how to do a layout so um a lot of that uh just seems to be you know cyclical i think people think they can just get um hire anybody for it but i i know because people are always coming to me i do have you know a decent voice and people are always coming to me and like you know like have you ever thought about doing um audiobooks and i'm like well yeah but i mean i also don't have enough hours in the day to learn to do that right you know so um you know there's who, who wants to talk to me a little bit about what and rick actually you've been doing this for a long time so and and you're kind of the guru here you know the snack the prize so um <laughs> tell me uh a little bit about sorry dude i can't it's just i'm gonna do it the whole show uh, so tell me <laughs> um tell me about that as a craft right we talk about on this program a lot filmmaking as a craft, you know, being a voiceover artist as a craft and developing that talent with yourself and, you know, how you just can't do it for five bucks and a, a deep voice. No, you can't. I mean, especially when you, when you, you're someone as, as good as or great as a Morgan Freeman. I mean, that, that voice is more than the $5. It becomes like a $5 million voice. And, and with a craft like this, it's not something that you can do in five months. It may take five years until you really hone your craft. And you're forever learning that you're going to learn something new because the trends change often, even as voice actors that, um, that are heard around the world. I mean, we still have coaches that we go to. In fact, we still learn from the new talent that are here. Like I said, because the trends are constantly training. So, I mean, changing. So it's for, you're forever learning. You're forever working in this business. 
So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a beautiful graph. This is why we're, we're all in it. I mean, you could, it, for, in all ages, I mean, from a child to, from, from, from nine months to 99, you can do voiceover. It's a beautiful. Well, voiceover. who, which one of you are doing voices for TikTok narration, right? You know, so people can point and stuff, you know, at the screen, like, and I'm, I'm being half serious. Cause I just wonder like, geez, where the hell do those come from? Where, you know, um, somebody lays down like, an audio track or whatever. And then people start using, I guess they do duets or whatever, but um, yeah. What is um, Ellie? Um, what is the, what is the, um, I think what is the most, what's been the most transformative thing since you started this journey with clubhouse, whether it's, you know, or let's do this. What have you learned as a voice actor that, through this contest, through this uh, thing that will make you a better uh, voice actor, I think, you know, what are the, the highlights of this for you and learning? Well, one of the things that I, I take, I took away like so many things from the competition itself, but one of the main things that I took away is that it is, it's hard work, even though obviously you already know it's hard work when you first start off, but once you're like in it, you have to like, because during the competition, we all had to pretty much present ourselves. And the thing is that it's the same thing when you go to an audition, or in front of a casting director, you have to make yourself stand out somehow, you have to literally do something special that because there's a bunch of other people that yes, they're, they're all talented. And they could all be well, they're all literally as talented as you are. So you have to find your niche, so to speak. So that's something that I learned, um, especially through the competition. And I feel like it's something important for every voice actor to know is to find that one thing that makes them special. Use that as your strength and that will make you stand out in this industry and it'll make your career successful. So that's pretty much what I learned. And um, I would say everybody that was a contestant in the contest and like you were just saying to Rick, um, even the professionals, uh, I don't know how many of you know Darian Danjou and his One Minute Film School. If you've crossed um, uh, paths with Darian, you definitely should. He's an excellent filmmaker and is teaching film for free, teaching filmmaking, the craft, you know, for free on Clubhouse and giving away awards. And, you know, like you guys, I mean, it's just amazing what you can learn on Clubhouse. Um, and I'm only in the, you know, the, the entertainment and media circles. I don't even know like what they're doing in the bomb making circles of clubhouse. That's a little scary, but I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of, um, just great connections being made here. Lifetime connections. Um, even with haps, social media, Twitter, anything I do on Instagram and connections and connections I make here, you know, like we're best friends in it day sometimes because there's just there's so much impact that 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 social media space our brains are wired to be like like addicted to all this stuff and you know they used to be worried about people being addicted to tv i mean that's nothing i i really i want my implants i want my upgrades i don't want to have to even carry a phone I don't want this, you know, $800 Sennheiser. I just want the the app that I can run my life. If I'm sad, I can dial it up to happy. You know, I just connect me, matrix me, you know, but um, the, um, the industry, as I, as I, as I drift off into what the hell was I talking about? Uh, and maybe I'll remember, but um, the, the industry, the changes, Deborah, what, um, what have you seen? Like, or where do you see? That's what I want to know. Where do you see this industry going? Because we got a f lot of folks on here that hopefully will be in it for the next 20, 30 years. What advice do you have to them? Just keep on going, you know, um, each no, it doesn't always mean no, no doesn't always mean no, no just means not today. You've just got to keep yep. going and pushing and turning up and doing your thing and 
picking yourself up and dusting yourself off and just keep going at it. And that, you know, that is the same advice across the board, whether it is for voiceover or acting or filmmaking or producing or whatever you are doing, mm -hmm. you have to just keep going. You know, and, and, and ask, right? Ask for the job, ask for the work, be there, you know, show well, up on time. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, if you show up on time, you're already late. But, right. you know, Ooh. in this industry, if you're early, you're late. If you're late, you're on time. If you're late, well, yeah. No, you're well, no, because, you know, if, if, if we're supposed to start at 7 30, everyone has to be there ready to start at 7 30, not turn up at 7 30, make themselves a coffee, you know, <laughs> you know, chit chat over a bagel. It, it, you know, they have to be ready to start and roll at 7 30. But um yeah, I, I think the whole industry, you know, a lot of things are changing. I know in animation that the marketplace is getting busier. And a lot of the TV shows, they don't need the, um, you know, the big A-listers. They just need good character voices. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I see some great programs that these guys are going to be, you know, working in in the future. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just amazed. I have this journey. I think one of the things that I... I've said about this whole contest is we planted a seed expecting it to be a seedling or if anything, you know, a, a nice little bush, but it has grown into this massive oak that, you know, has income has brought together a great community on clubhouse. And, you know, I'm honored to be part of that journey for, for all of these people, you know, I'm I'm just blown away by what started as something quite well shall we do it and it, you know we've it's just turned out to be like the stuff for Ellie you know she's now got a voiceover agent for 6 months That's awesome you know another she, prize of the contest there that was the prize that Ellie won and the um other finalists were all given um, some coaching or mentoring um, by the panelists. So uh, all of the finalists were winners, as far as we, as far as we were concerned. So we wanted to make sure that they all did this, and it's been absolutely wonderful. You know, we, we've become like a extended family. You know, um, some of the names. There's some sweet names they call me, and some not so sweet names. But we won't get into that. <laughs> hey, um, Tom Thumb, deep fake Tom Cruise. Uh, hang on, there you go. Um, it's insane. The guy that's doing these Tom Cruise deep fakes on TikTok got about the same frame in the body, same size guy, has got the ticks down, he's got the body movements, you know, a little bit. Um, I he's got one hell of a computer and software because these are real, really good deep fakes. So um, nothing is real, never was. Um, but the um, voices, holy shit, we've been on here for 58 minutes. We can stay on as long as we want. But like we got a lot of talent up here. So um, Rose, um, give us a, um, a scenario where this group needs to uh that voiceover talent needs to um quickly have a little production meeting they'll have like two minutes to talk together and put something a performance together for us so give us a scenario rose and then um we've got um four people here and rick you're you're welcome to to your, your voiceover too but you could also help think this up give us a scenario a little skit something to do and then we'll give them two minutes to talk it out live here develop the characters and do it. So Deborah, you, you got, need Rose? to come in on this too. I have no idea. Um, what do you got, Rick, Deborah? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's have them use their voices and we just, let's come up with the scenario and they use their voices. We can go with an, an order from Frizo um, to Ellie, to Chris, to Ellie. Let's say they, the ice cream is melting and Frizo, what are you going to do about it? You throw it to Ali and you, you, you all use awesome. your voices. Yeah. 
Good idea. Okay. Perfect. You Thank you, Rick. Okay. So that Frizo's frozen, but the ice cream is oh. melting. <laughs> I'm frozen. Let's see. There you are. Okay. You got time to take a breath, dude. I didn't mean, you know, you, you can take a beat. You can take 30 seconds. Um, all of you think about, well, you won't, Ellie. What the hell is he going to do? Right, Holy so shit. You got to be nervous, Saturday. Ellie, because yeah. you don't know what this guy's going to do. All right. Go ahead, Frizo. <laughs> okay. Now that we finally have you uh, as our guest here in the UK, I noticed that my brand new fridge is actually not working anymore and we just stocked up on loads of ice cream. So that is all going to waste right now. It's melting. What do they do in the States when the ice cream is melting, Ellie? Well, actually, we just get ice cubes and then stick them in a bucket and then put the ice cream inside of it and hope that it gets solid again. Oh, wait, what do you, oh. what, what else do we do, Allie? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure what to do about ice cream because I'm a little bit lactose intolerant, but my brother, on the other hand, loves and adores ice cream. I bet he could just open his big fat mouth and all the ice cream will just flow right into his mouth. So then I guess there wouldn't be ice cream for everyone else, but he'd have plenty of ice cream. What do you think, Chris? Oh, what are you doing handing me melted ice cream? I mean, come on, what am I supposed to do with it? Look at it, it's all down my arms right now. Okay, I might as well just eat it. Oh, I'm lactose intolerant too, I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, yeah, that, that, that's melting ice cream, that is cool. <laughs> all that melting ice cream, that, is, that, is, that has got to get the chicks, right? Yeah, <laughs> giggity, giggity, giggity. <laughs> Good job. Brilliant. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you. I love how Quagmire okay. finished it off. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah. That was nice. <laughs> Chris out the gate with that Iago. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I imagining know. Gilbert Godfrey just holding ice cream. I know, right? <laughs> with a vein in his forehead, like, ugh. Right. No, I. I they're, they're very talented, aren't they? They're all they are, very, they very are, talented. They're very talented. I, uh, I definitely, you know, um, definitely, definitely do voices, you know, around the house. But I wouldn't want anybody to hear them. Um, give us one more thing. Let's let's swing through the other way. Let's start with Allie and uh, Rick. Give us a, another little good launch platform. Oh. <laughs> A launch platform. Well, something to do. You know, I don't know. I mean, you're on, oh, you know, you're on the space shuttle. Now it, it's out of business. Oh, you and Elon Musk are in space headed to the moon. Allie, there you go. <laughs> go okay, so here's the deal. We're going to the moon and I'm a little concerned because on some days the moon is like really round and really but then there's some days where the moon looks like a toenail, and I'm not sure where to land this thing. I don't know what to do. What do you think, Chris? Uh, Elmo kind of wants his floor swing around. So, my, my fear on this rocket, um, I, I don't know. Would it be a mercy to eat ice cream right now? Uh, Ellie? Oh my god, why do you guys have ice cream on the moon? Elon is about to drop an NFT, okay? And it's based on toenails. We can't be doing this right now, okay? We cannot do this. Frizo, Frizo, please, please, please. Get yeah, well, it, it all boils down to the, to the old mechanic, doesn't it? I mean, I'm the only person who actually thought about doing the navigation update on this damn ship, didn't I? So I think we're going to be okay. If Elon takes the wheel, we'll get there. Right? Elon. 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 Oh, my. He's gone. <laughs> All right. Alone. Excellent. Excellent. And, um, you know, being thrown into, um, you know, the fire there without a script and and everything, I, that's just, that's really fun to see. Um, it is... Um, it's just a total joy. Who's got um who's got um a little bit of a 
parting thought, actually, maybe the contestants, um, just talk a little bit, each of you, um, how, um, just how meaningful this is to you, to Deborah, um, and, and everybody else that put this together. Um, I'll start this uh, by because well, I left earlier somehow, <laughs> so I come back in. I can finish up. Um, I will say that um, honestly, it uh, it has uh, done wonders for uh, my confidence. Uh, it has really taught me that I do have a place in this industry. Um, you know that uh, that I. Um, I'm surrounded by all of the, the, these uh, fantastic, uh, very talented, hardworking people in the voiceover industry. I'm, I'm constantly learning, and um, yeah, it's uh, it's just incredible how much uh, the voiceover industry seems to support each other. I mean, just even uh, the community on Clubhouse, and just look around in this room right now. I mean, uh, yeah, these finalists, we are pretty much like brothers and sisters. <laughs> you know, it's come to that point. Um, so uh, yes, it it does mean so much to me. It has changed my life because I am properly pursuing uh, voiceover um, acting now uh, this year. And uh, yeah, fantastic. That's what I'll share. Um, I'll go next. Uh, so yeah, this this has been extremely life changing, mm -hmm. and I agree with Chris. Um, pretty much like. Everyone that we have come across um, throughout our like voiceover journey, because most of us are pretty similar. We all started our journey pretty much around the same time. Um, and I met uh, Chris and Ali and Frizo, and then the other two finalists that aren't here, but I'm going to mention them because they're amazing as well. Rico Reform and Desiree Diaz. They are phenomenal mm -hmm. as well. And, um, you know, all of us is, have pretty much become brothers and sisters like Chris said we're we're like an, it's an extended family you know Deborah's uh, our fairy godmother as well as Hermione and you know uh Rick is Papa Rick he's he's our, our VO father and there's just so many like others like Rose is our auntie like <laughs> so there's just so many different um, amazing people that we've come across and they're just part of our our family just going into this industry. So it's so nice and refreshing to know that we have such great support um, surrounding us, um, especially going into an industry that's new to all of us. Um, and I'm just incredibly grateful to everyone that was involved and all of the finalists. And it's just such a great experience. And I can't wait to see where everyone lands. I know everyone's going to be incredibly successful because everyone's like super talented. And I'm just rooting for everyone as well. But yeah, this is great. Awesome. Fantastic. Hey, Nazim. Um, Nazim is in, in Italy. And um, so... Here you go, buddy. It's evening in your part of the world, and uh, you can watch the show. So good to see you. Um, all right. Who's next? I'll go next. Um, this competition has taught me that I agree with uh, Chris and Ellie, too. A lot of camaraderie amongst all of us, including Rico and Desiree, who are not here. A big confidence boost for absolute certain. Um, but something I definitely took out. Um, besides those things was to not take myself too seriously, like to take it seriously, but not take it so seriously and so personally um, with everything that I've done and everything that I've learned and everything that I've tried out. Um, it's not worth it if you're not having fun. And throughout this whole competition, I was having a ton of fun, lots of fun, even in the little mishaps here and there um, and the little bumps along the way. Um, just getting to do different things and finding a lot of like-minded people who make all the silly voices like you do. A lot of people around, like my, my family, for example, they still kind of look at me strange. Like they get it, but they look at me a little strange. So it's cool to come to a place where everybody else is doing the same thing I'm doing um, and just having fun with it. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, we're all the right <laughs> side of crazy. Oh, <laughs> that's for sure. Exactly. Yeah, I, I can only fully agree with my other Freeze finalists. Up. Yeah, I, I can only uh, agree totally with everyone else here. 
Um, but I also want to, the one thing that I also took away from this is that, you know, the silly voices and the impersonations and all that kind of stuff, that is really great. But if you listen to agents and other people, they say it, it is your own voice in the end that has to do the work. Um, most of the work, I, I spent this, this afternoon, I spent an hour on a, a silly 10 second radio commercial together with my coach. And it just goes to show you can do one sentence, you can do that in like 50 or 100 different ways. And that is the craft. And you can only learn that by by practicing. And all those other people out there, voiceover artists who are on Clubhouse, who have been supporting us during these finals, during this competition. I mean, that is the bread and butter work that most of us will probably do. And 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 of course, the, the, the bigger things are, are the snacks, basically, the takeaways, the the animation stuff, that is all great, but um, it all also has to come from your own voice. And that is just practice, practice, practice. And that is why I have such appreciation for people like Rick Party um, and, and Kelly Dougherty, who was very big in radio imaging. She also runs rooms on Clubhouse where they just get people up there and start doing stuff and practicing. And, and then you hear all the feedback and then you realize, oh my God, this really is something that you need to uh, learn and to practice and you need to take it seriously uh i'm i'm on three training courses simultaneously at the moment and i have a coach and so you really need to practice 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 and then yeah then we can probably we can probably all get somewhere but yeah it's it's made me realize it, it is a real craft and it, it deserves a lot of attention well that is that is those are really great words because again I constantly go back to craft in these conversations that I have um, with actors and musicians. The um, like the joy, Deborah, of uh, of just putting this together and hearing those responses, and Rick as well. Um, it just it, you know just right there. That's just got to be worth it just to hear how you know impactful we can be, you know, when we bring opportunity that we've been able to create for ourselves, you know, to other people. So, I mean, I want to thank you for doing that because I think, um, that is just, I mean, just the, the spirit of it is phenomenal. Um, it's just absolutely wonderful to, um, you know, seriously, Ellie has a six month we, we contract. We yeah. Yeah. We basically created a platform for the, to help people to help themselves. Mm -hmm. I have to ponder that Ellie will have longer than a six month contract. Oh just, yeah, just I talk, Deborah and I talked <laughs> oh, about that. Oh, yeah. oh, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for sure. No question just, about that. Just from what I gather, I think. Yeah, I think it's it's a good bet. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I will you say know we did. Go ahead, Deborah. Sorry, I was just going to say, you know, we, because who knew when we started just how amazing the talent was going to be. And of course, we didn't want to handcuff the poor agent into a long term contract. So we right. thought six months. But I, th I think Rose is right. I don't want to put words into Emma's um, mouth, but I'm quietly confident too. I'm agree. <laughs> I'm agreeing with awesome. Rose on that one. Yeah. That is that is awesome, Chris Gales. Good to see you, buddy. And by the way, Chris, um, we need to spend the evening together, just you and I hanging out. You singing to me, so um, <laughs> he's in Memphis. Are you? In Memphis? He's in Memphis. He is. Yeah, he's an, a fantastic My husband's musician from Memphis. Hey, buddy. Nice. Yeah, um, yeah. Memphis is a is a great town. Um, yeah. So let's see. First. Anybody that, um, as I said, wants to do anything on here, let me know. But I really do want to kind of formally ask the four students um, to come back, see if we can wrangle your other two uh, finalists. Find a time. Um, cause there is a, and, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, it's a shame the other two weren't able to make it today. Yeah. You know, they were amazing. Yeah, and, I, and so I, I definitely want to do a show. My biggest thing is trying to figure out because Frizo and Chris are, you know, on the other side of the pond there. So um, because I I would like to do one for the, um, you know, the 
it's, it's funny, this goes worldwide, but I focus on specific parts of the world in terms of their prime time, you know, so for North America here, South America, Central America, um, an evening where you guys would have to be up really freaking early or, or no stay up really late. Um, so we can all talk about that. Stay in touch with me on IG. Uh, I want you guys to have another shot at getting to talk about this and, and maybe we'll talk together and have some, um, things prepared and, you know, let's, let's get another chance for everybody to kind of hear your voices, let you shine and, you know, let people know what voiceover is about. I'd love to sometime too. <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> is pair some new voiceover folks that are talented with some animators and see what you can throw together and then bring it on the show and, uh, and talk about the process and all that stuff. So, you know, we'll do that on a big interview sometime too, if you want to Deborah, anything you need, let me know anything I can do for you, please. Um, I'm happy, you know, to do it. I want to promote this for you next time it comes around, you know, if you want to jump on and pre promote it, you know what I mean? Um, whatever. I'm happy to help. And uh, Well, I can say we had so much fun with the voiceover contest. We're actually starting another contest tomorrow for musical theater. Oh, wow. Oh, Deborah, wow. you just don't stop. You are just a nut job. I don't know what to tell you, except well, for you need to go to bed once in a while. She has found <laughs> one of those ancient Grecian um, springs, and she's built her home over it. And that's, you know, she's literally sucking the life out of all of us through this magical spring that, of water that she has in Greece. And I do want to exactly. say that, like, wow, you live in Greece, like, um, yeah, that's nice. Like taxes are low. Um, and you know, I mean, well, um, I actually, my business is in the UK. I'm based out of Parliament ooh, Studios. So I pay, killed. I pay, I get my, I pay my taxes in the UK for my business, <laughs> but then I also have to pay taxes in Greece as well. So I get it on both sides, but it, you know, that aside, I love it here. I really yeah, I was do. just, you know, because um, we have states where people will move in the United States that don't have a, a state tax, you know, um, and everybody during COVID that could, so many people left the big cities um, percentage wise and like just bought little houses in these, you know, little towns in Alabama or Kansas or whatever. So um, yeah, Greece, that would be great. Who's... Um, you in New York, Allie? I'm just doing time zones. And yeah, Allie? I'm, we're the same time zone, Ellie and I. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Eastern. Fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah, I am too. Excellent. So, if anybody needs anything, I'm here for it. You want to start something here? I'm here for it. Um, however, I can help with the next competition, I'm here for it. Happy to do it. Um, I cannot, again, say enough just how amazing everybody that put the effort into this uh, is in the, in the, and the kudos they get because, um, I mean, you know, Ellie's freaking working in the business, you know, um, that like, what would she have done? Seriously camped out, you know, in front of somebody's house with doing a bunch of characters until the cops came to get your attention. So, uh, that's just fantastic. And, um, we've got, obviously, um, uh, we're wrapping it up, but anybody's got any parting words? Let's, uh, you know, let's do it. And then uh, we'll let you guys all get going, get your days completed or started or wherever you are in the world. I'd just like to say thank you for everyone taking part, because if you hadn't come up on stage and, you know, put yourself out there, then we would have been sort of sat on stage just whistling the breeze <laughs> you know, not knowing what to do with ourselves. But, you know, you we were blown away by the amount of talent and you know i know that still clouds didn't get through to the finals but i still think she deserves a shout out because you know her audition in week one really did yes put the bar it was amazing here she was great still clouds was the person i was listening to when i was getting my vaccine so if it weren't for still clouds going up i probably wouldn't may or may not have auditioned so she absolutely deserves a shout out. But, yeah. you know, I it, it's amazing how much of a butterfly effect this whole thing has been. Mm -hmm. 
you know, I think someone just um, that was in the semi-final just happened to come across our room and thought, oh, this sounds interesting, put his hand up and then wrote a script while he was waiting on stage. You know, it was just like amazing. We had so much fun, you know, as, as the team on stage, you know, on Clubhouse, you know, you have the the chat where everyone discusses what's going on in stage behind what we call the back channel. Mm -hmm. And the panelists were just going crazy. Oh my God. Did you just hear that? You know, so we did, we enjoyed it so much. It's just been an absolute amazing journey. And I thank you all for, you know, coming along for the ride. And also, uh, on behalf of us, I want to say thank you, Deborah, for uh, not just in, in me, but uh, believing in us and supporting us in yeah. you know the manner in which you actually did it. You know, it's uh, it's been a joy. Um, you know, you've given us uh, so much to think about, so much to work on, and we're doing it with a smile on our faces. So, thank you. I just want to congratulate yeah, and... the students too for for what you all do. Um, Listen, all of you from, from Frizo with the Dutch Voice Collective, the room that you've made, Ellie and Allie, the room that you two made, Chris with the uh, voiceover and impressions. Listen, if no one uh, lets you in the door, you make your own house and you all have done that and you're letting people in and just screaming as loud as you can. So keep doing that. That's awesome, Rick. Thanks, yeah. man. Thank you. Really appreciate thank that. You, thank you. Rose, do you have any, any parting words? I mean, what Rick said is so true. Everybody, you know, needs to make their own content and, you know, and you will bubble up and, you know, find fi all the rest of you find yourself some voiceover agents because it's it's not as hard as it seems. And, and I will. Yeah, um, I will say that this broadcast will be, you know, it'll be viewed by a few people that um you know, there's a lot of people that watch these things are in clubhouse and stuff. So yeah. Um, be there, be everywhere, be ubiquitous, you know, let everybody know, you know, what you can do and, and how to do it. I love that idea too, Rose, about continuing, you know, to create content, make those vehicles that are just right for you and get, and get them out there. Um, and just continue to have fun. One of you said it, you know, it, Allie, maybe if it's not fun, um, man, it's hard. And I've been, I'm very lucky at doing this, that I've done this, um, cause it's a blast. So, um, all of you can, I think you're all on desktops. So I'm going to end the show, but stay here backstage for a minute. We'll just talk real quick. And then, um, anytime, like I said, you want to come back, listen, folks, go to scoochcase.com, buy a case, support those guys. You're supporting the show. You're supporting our overall mission. And honestly, um, a program like this, you know, it doesn't happen if I don't have the time uh, to make the connections and get the folks up here and, you know, it takes money to do this stuff. So uh, support us in that way. Support us uh, through the profile page. Everybody, thank you very much for being with us. This is fantastic. Hope to see all of you again soon. I, I will definitely hear all of you again soon because I've got to drop into all your rooms and see what happens in there. So do me a favor. IG me your clubhouse rooms. And yeah. Wonderful, sure. wonderful folks. Thank you, everybody out in the chat. Thanks for participating. Um, just love to all of you, and uh, we'll see you soon. We're on tonight with Debbie Richards, four-time Emmy Award-winning film producer and director. That'll be a really fun show tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern time here in the U.S. Peace be with you, and namaste.